Civil War is sanctimonious, snobby, and confused. It juggles conflicting themes of media's everlasting importance in the lives of the average citizen alongside that of media's inevitable spiral into obsolescence. Though we follow their grueling trek into war-torn DC, it's hard to afford whole sympathy to the group of photojournalists driving the film's central plot, as, compared to the rest of the world, they have a rather comfortable gig. Journalism, even war journalism, is a comfortable man's career. Amidst all-out chaos, Lee and her ilk are protected from the hellstorm outside, their greatest inconvenience being a power outage, a broken elevator, and a painfully long flight of stairs. Granted, that doesn't last long, as throughout the film, they do plunge into some of the most heart-racing combat encounters and are face-to-face -face with the most dangerous of individuals. But yet again, every one of these situations are knowingly chosen by the journalists. They purposefully chase trouble, pick up poisonous snakes, only to cry about it when the snake inevitably bites them. The actually life-threatening circumstances they find themselves entangled in are all the results of a pattern of deliberate choices. And for what? Who exactly receives and or benefits from these photos? When they're not chumming it up with their elitist buddies, Lee, Joel, and Sammy chase after scoops that nobody asked for. At least, that's all we can assume, given that there's no hint of a recipient for these pictures, and the only people desirous of a pre-execution interview with the president are the journalists themselves, projecting their own wasted fascinations onto the rest of the civilized world. These glorified storm chasers engage in a career constantly threatening self-annihilation for no charitable reason at all. But I can tell you, this gunfire is getting extremely fucking hard. Civil War, despite softly mocking the faux-heroic bourgeoisie class that sums up journalists, is often unaware of its own criticisms, aiming more direct beams of scorn at the few uninformed individuals amidst the national conflict. Are you guys aware there's like a pretty huge civil war going on all across America? Oh, well, sure, but we just try to stay out. Minute by minute, Alex Garland seems to flip-flop on his liquid concrete themes, solidifying one point, then melting down to erect another. At once, Civil War portrays the defectors and the willfully uninformed as helpless nitwits playing on some lesser field of intellect, only to turn around and depict such a way of living as the ideal. When asked about her family by Lee, Jessie badmouths her parents for being homesteading farmers in the Midwest, with no intention of getting caught up in the war. There are my dad's cameras, actually. Don't worry, he's not dead. He's sitting on his farm in Missouri, pretending like none of this is happening. Civil War scoffs at the willfully ignorant, as though it's utterly preposterous that anybody would choose to stay out of the loop, contently uninvolved. Garland seems so sure in this moment that a happy life devoid of all the fear porn peddled by the news is somehow reprehensible, mockery without evidence. Yet the proof is in the pudding, Garland contradicts himself in just the portraits painted of Jesse's adult role models, two aging, childless, drinking, smoking, tail-chasing photojournalists working for themselves more than any audience or country. Lee doesn't take photos because it's her passion, maybe at some point it was, but now it's simply her only choice. She's been doing it so long, built so much of herself upon that foundation, that to dismantle it now would be to undo herself entirely. Her life, whether or not she likes it, is in the game. As for Joel, he clearly has a death wish, an addiction to adrenaline, or at least a sick, prey-like power fantasy to hide behind big men and women with guns while claiming some political victory he deserves not. In neither case is there a particularly sensible or redeeming role model for Jesse, just two hopeless cases, so sunken down that they can't possibly give anyone else a leg up, selfish people grooming a young apprentice to be just as miserable and traumatized. There is no version of this that isn't a mistake. I know, because I'm it. The one redeeming quality of Civil War is that Lee expresses some degree of remorse, projecting hesitation into the all-too-eager Jesse 
trying, at least in some capacity, to stifle her avidness and sober her to the horrors of a war journalist career, the long-term effects of which we can immediately spot in Lee. Without words even, there should be nothing enticing in Lee's aura. There's not the least of an attempt to cover or paint over the fatigue and absorption of sorrow in her face, especially when recalling back to the gorgeous Mary Jane from Spider-Man played by the same Kirsten Dunst. And her lack of husband or kids is yet another silent tragedy of this destitute career woman. What is argued in Lee is the case that a life of being in the know and making a career of it is the last path anyone, let alone a woman, should pursue. In fact, the one time Lee smiles over the course of the entire film is when she isn't working and isn't ensnared into the wasteland of political violence. Hey. Yes. You're pretty when you smile. There you go. The shame and confusion of Civil War is that Lee's path is in no way the one which makes her happiest, and she doesn't have to take it. Strangely, Civil War treats journalism like an essential function in society. Somebody has to do it. It's a role that requires filling, else the gears don't work. Food isn't delivered, and people don't live. But it's quite the opposite. In the first place, although war journalists see their fair share of sickening sights and have more than a few sleepless nights, they always choose this path willingly, an unessential job no less. But more than a choice, a wartime photojournalism career is a degenerative choice, a career which serves only to capture and therefore eternalize the savaging of humans by other humans is anything but constructive. It's a great photo, Jesse. The paradox of Civil War is that wartime photojournalism, which technically creates tangible photos, pieces of material felt at the fingertips, is actually a life path of degenerative pursuit. Though they take up space and are comprised of matter, celluloid pictures of dead bodies and premeditated executions are quite literally worse than nothing. You'd be better off capturing nothing at all, coming back empty-handed, or otherwise capturing something sweet. What about your folks? Uh, well, actually, they're on a farm, too. Oh. Except Colorado. Also, pretending this isn't happening. <laughs> no shit. Ignorance, neutrality, passivity, and thus happiness are all non-options in the eyes of Civil War. If you're not actively engaged in it, you're not doing your part. Civil War's greatest hatred is aimed towards the willingly ignorance in a time of heightened political tension, and that hatred scarcely lasts at all. As it turns out, not doing your part is rather serene and joyous. The old town of stupid white people with popsicles in their ears if initially a target for juvenile mockery, serves as a reprieve from the film's constant agitation of war. At once belittling of their happy existence, Garland is simultaneously remiss that such simple serenity is so scarce. A little slice of heaven amidst the horrors. There's a brief, if prickly and stifled, romance associated with the town. Chiefly, Jesse taking Lee's photo as she tries on a clean white dress is a short and sentimental taste of how life could be and how Jesse's camera could be used, capturing beauty and joy rather than hate and death. It's earnestly regretful that life isn't more often like this, and if snobbish in an unearned manner towards the girl running the sleek and clean pre-war store, Civil War hardly makes the case that she and her town are wrong. Civil War is making an obvious case, yet it has little courage to come out and speak its conclusions. Despite an explosive brand of unpresidential imagery that is entirely unique in a scene of stiff and predictable blockbuster slop, Alex Garland's latest political thriller is a cowardly admission into the hall of modern filmmaking. Many parts of it I enjoyed stylistically, and its tension is raw and real. Its criticisms, however, are confused, more often self-defeating than they are insightful. I'm not entirely sure that even Alex Garland knew what he wanted to say with Civil War. There's two opposing voices present throughout the film. 
Despite their unenviable status in life, the journalists are made out as the heroes of the film, and the willfully unaware population are, without exception, the lunk-headed dummies. But if the two worlds are weighed, the lunk-headed dummies clearly have something good going on. And even Alex Garland can't deny that.